Hi, I'm Dr. Golly, paediatrician. I've trained in infant mental health and worked with sleep specialists, lactation consultants, parent craft nurses, and sleep schools. I've read all the books, studied all the journals, and watched all the videos. What's clear to me is that there is no one technique that settles all babies. If you're looking for a rigid routine or militant settling technique, you won't find it here. There is no one size fits all solution. Every culture is different. Every child is different. There are infinite variables and confounding factors. It is absurd to think that the incredibly complex relationship between baby and parent can be reduced to an instruction manual. I'm going to teach you what's normal and what's abnormal, what your baby is capable of and when they need to be given more time to reach these targets. I will debunk the many myths that exist and empower you to harness the fantastic parenting instincts that you already possess. Throughout the program, we'll also look at the unique and powerful potential of the non-breastfeeding parent, usually dad, and I'll show you and your partner just how much of a secret weapon they are. Humans have an unusually short pregnancy compared with other mammals, largely due to the size of our brains. If humans remained pregnant for longer than nine months, our baby's heads would not fit through the birth canal. Unlike other mammals, which are able to begin walking shortly after birth, human babies remain exceptionally dependent and they need to feel like they're still in the womb. This is sometimes known as the fourth trimester. Many of the settling techniques you'll find in the program calm an unsettled baby by recreating this feeling of being inside the womb. Whether it's swaddling to mimic the warm hug of the womb, shushing to recreate the sounds of being underwater, or patting to remind them of their mother's heartbeat. As much as possible in the weeks following birth, babies should be close to their caregiver, like the cord was still very much attached. But somewhere along the line, we forgot to cut that cord. Eventually, we need to separate from our babies for them to learn to cope and be resilient in the absence of a parent, but also for our own physical and mental well being as parents and caregivers. So, the newborn period is not just about feeding, clothing, protecting the child, it's also about protecting the parents and helping the child to build resilience, learn to self settle all when they are developmentally able. The famous paediatrician William Sears, he promoted the concept of attachment parenting back in the 1950s. It's all about fostering a strong relationship between parent and child through physical closeness and maximal parental empathy. While attachment is crucial and beautiful, it's not enough. What good is that parent to a child if the parent is exhausted, underslept, overwhelmed. Parental empathy and responsiveness requires that parent to be present, but also well rested, happy, and not anxious. This is crucial throughout a child's upbringing, but never more so than during the first formative months of life. That's why in 1991, Ainsworth and Bowlby pioneered secure attachment in children. Now this is more than just attachment. It's the foundation for good long-term social and emotional outcomes. It's everything we want for our children. And secure attachment comes about not as a result of attachment parenting practices, but from the consistently available parent who is attuned to their child's needs and emotions. Famed American psychology professor Alison Gopnik recently wrote a book entitled The Gardener and the Carpenter, as a parent, stop being a carpenter. Stop trying to construct the perfect child. It never works. Instead, be the gardener. Foster a stable and secure environment. Stave off extreme conditions and illness. Provide the basics. And then watch your child prove themselves remarkably capable. You provide the soil, the water, the sun, and then allow them to grow and become. I've had parents thank me over the years and jokingly refer to me as a baby whisperer. 
but I think of myself more as a parent whisperer. By deciding to be a part of this program, you've already shown that you're a great parent who's ready to help your baby achieve what they are capable of. I'm really looking forward to working with you to unleash your natural instincts as a great parent, both mum and dad. My ultimate aim is to have empowered families and sleeping babies.